Hello all. All right, today we're gonna look at what mass extinction looks like, regardless of what animal it is, whether it's humans or bears or coyotes or whatever it is. Why do I have a shadow right there? What is that, a tick? Um, hmm, what to do about that? You know what I could do? I could just, well, first of all, I forgot the microphone, so. Okay, I'll just put the uh, shadow kind of down here. Hopefully it won't be too annoying. Uh, the reason I bring this up is because um, it's pretty clear now with the latest warnings that humans are on a uh, crash course for annihilation. What will that look like when it comes? Will it happen the same all over the planet or just different in different places? Of course it's going to be different in different places, but the roles will always be the same. And the reason I say that is because if you look at, at studies of where animals have died out from thirst and hunger, they, they, they all act exactly the same. We're going to take the uh, woolly mammoths for an example. They mostly died out 10,500 years ago in most of the world, but there was one small group on St. Paul Island that survived, and we'll go look at that island here in a minute on the map. The, um, this small group of woolly mammoths were trapped on this island from previous ice ages when they walked over to the island when it was all glacier and that's where they found food so they stayed there and then when the glaciers receded they were trapped on the uh, island but because of climate change the sea level kept rising and rising and rising and the island became smaller and smaller the herds were at their maximum because of the food availability because of the warming climate so they were a little bit overpopulated to begin with and the only source of drinking water were lakes that formed from rain now unfortunately for these woolly mammoths, the rains were changing because of climate change and their biggest lakes filled in with salt water as the water came up. So they quickly were running out of not only food source, which was being overtaken by the ocean, but their water source at the same time was disappearing very quickly because they were having rapid sea level rise. This, this, uh, this story has been played out so many times with uh, animals of all types, and humans are no different. They are going to face this very same thing. Let's go through it. The woolly mammoths on St. Paul Island, as they, uh, the pressure started to mount and food became scarce, fighting started. Wars between one group and another group of woolly mammoths happened, and the fighting took place in a lot of different places on the island, causing a lot of the vegetation to get trampled and smashed into the earth, which then became vulnerable to erosion. And when the rains did come, they took all this dirt and dust from all the fighting and they flowed into the lakes. Now let's go over to the map for a minute here. I wanted to show you that right here. This huge once was a lake that filled in completely with sediments because of the fighting around the lake. Now as you can see, all these lakes are very bowl shaped. And that's because they fought, most of their fighting was around the water holes that existed and of course the strongest survived for a while but they had to continuously fight off the weak or the competition and so the land became so eroded these lakes filled in more and more with sediment and silt and ruined the drinking water for them all plus they uh, did the same thing where there was still vegetation they fought viciously over those areas and they wiped them out just in fighting alone see humans are, are on the exact same path right now got World War III pretty much underway. We're fighting amongst ourselves. We're having huge demonstrations over oil pipelines. We're really at a threshold right now of, of are, are we going to just sit here and, and pay attention to fighting with each other or are we actually going to do something to slow down the climate change so that we don't have to have the same fate that happened to the poor Willie Mammoth who starved and thirsted to death. They say some places the animals were dying in the hundreds by the week. Could you imagine the stink and the ah and the poor people that the poor elephants that had to to survive after that and slowly die away from and the smell I mean, it's just 
people, there's every reason not to fight with each other and there's every reason to fix our climate. Now, we do have choices we can make that, that determines whether we have politicians that prudent choices about climate change. There's one politician, I'm not even going to mention his name, who says that he's going to abolish all the federal cleaning up money, the Superfund Act, all that he's going to abolish it so that it can be used, I'm sure, to uh, help the wealthy become even more wealthy. But, but they're not going to do anything. And the other politician of the DNR rank here in the U.S. has nothing to do, doesn't even know what climate change is and says the environmentalists need to go do something oh well so I just wanted to bring that so I just wanted to bring that tiny bit of uh, news to you because it's becoming more and more clear that this is going to happen to humans it's going to happen in different places different ways but we're all going to face it in the same way we're going to humans will act just like all other animals once that hunger starts and that thirst starts you turn into a different person than you were you become desperate your brain thinks of nothing but how to get water and food and has no regard to the consequences so you will maybe even just go up and attack someone for their water or something you know and, and other people will be doing the same thing it's going to be hell hell on earth and you will fight and fight and fight for the last drop of water and food and there's no way you're going to get out of that if we don't do something about climate change you know this is this is november and here in california we're still in the 80s yesterday we broke 80 degrees in some places here in the bay area it's uh, 7 30 right now in the morning and we're still in the 70s unbelievable this is november when i was a child we had ice and frost in november November. Oh, I wish that, uh, that shadow wasn't there. It's ruining my video. There are a ton of other situations that, that animals get into and have the same situation happen to them. And humans are no different and we're going to face the same consequences if we don't do something about it. That's the only thing I can think of, really. I don't know what else to say. So, I certainly do appreciate all your nice comments on the last videos, and your ups and your downs, and your new subscribers. I've been getting quite a few lately. Kind of nice to see on a hot November day. Until next time.